Hello everyone, I am Dr. C.J. Vargis, welcoming all of you to the Global GNM Health Tips Day 254. Today we start with a new and a very important SBS, that is of the nasal mucosa. By the very name you could understand that it is the mucous membrane of the nose. The nasal mucosa is consisting of squamous epithelium which originally was the outer skin developed from the ectoderm and later migrated into the nasal cavities just as they migrated through the nipples into the milk ducts, into the ear canals, respiratory tract and the outer part of the eye. We discuss the nasal mucosa here because its squamous epithelium which originated from the ectoderm is controlled from the cerebral cortex. Nasal cavity is the passageway divided into two, the right and the left that connects with the paranasal sinuses through small openings. In the back they end at the nasopharynx and oral surface mucosa. It is good for you to understand that out of the five senses of hearing, sight, smell, taste and touch, the sense of smell is the oldest one and is very powerful at birth. It is linked with the sense of taste also. The nasal mucosa has an additional function to clean and moisten the air before it enters the deeper air passages and lungs. This is done by the nasal mucus produced by the endodermal cells acting as nasal glands and contained in the residues of the epithelial nasal mucosa because at present there are no endodermal submucosa in the nasal cavity. Now let us consider the brain level control of the nasal mucosa. It is controlled from the sensory cortex of the cerebral cortex. Here again, there is the crossover correlation from the brain to the nasal mucosa. That means, the nasal mucosa of the right side is controlled from the left sensory cortex and that of the left side is controlled from the right sensory cortex of the cortical hemispheres. Now comes the most important part in the study of the SBS of the nasal mucosa that is its biological conflict. As you know already, the biological conflict of any organ is linked to its function. Here also, the biological conflict related to the nasal mucosa is a scent conflict. It would be useful for you if you can remember that the biological conflict linked to the paranasal sinuses is also the same as that of the nasal mucosa, which we will study later. Also remember that the biological conflict of the submucosa of the mouth and pharynx, which we studied earlier, is a morsel conflict. In the case of animals, this scent conflict is the one provoked by the scent of a predator or by the smell of a poisonous fume. For the humans, this scent conflict can be also a figurative smelling of a danger, a trouble or a threat. This can occur with a competitor or an opponent at the work site, at the school, at home or in a relationship. The biological conflict linked to the nasal mucosa is also a stink conflict. The meaning of the word stink is a strong unpleasant smell. It can also be perceived in real terms and in a transposed sense. An offending odor a strong and unpleasant smell or a smell associated with a danger etc. can cause stink conflict in real terms. For example, if a person believes that the secondhand smoke coming from a person who smokes a cigarette can cause lung cancer, this passive smoke also can cause a real stink conflict. In a transposed manner, this same sting conflict can be evoked by a situation that is perceived by the individual as this stings, meaning I am fed up with this situation. This can be about an annoying person or a pest. In a way, it is also a separation conflict, meaning wanting to separate from something very close. Remember here, 
The nasal mucosa is nothing but the original outer skin that later migrated into the nasal cavity. As per the rule of tissues and organs derived from ectoderm and controlled from the cerebral cortex, the right or left sided nasal mucosa to be affected is determined by one's biological handedness and whether the conflict is mother child or partner related. If the stink conflict is of general nature, which is usually the case, both sides of the nasal mucosa will be affected. Before going to the details of the biological special program of the nasal mucosa with its CA phase, healing phase symptoms and the related medical conditions, please remember that the whole of this SBS follows the outer skin sensitivity pattern. That means there will be hyposensitivity during conflict active phase and hypersensitivity during healing phase. That also means when the nasal mucosa becomes hypersensitive, as it is usually expressed, a single touch of nose provokes symptoms of sneezing or nasal discharge. We have to understand that the conflict is resolved and the biological special program of the nasal mucosa has already entered into healing phase. Friends, the detailed SBS of nasal mucosa we will study tomorrow. Until then, goodbye. I am Dr. C.J. Vargis from Kerala, India.